Your experience of reality is entirely subjective. It's entirely arbitrary. If you were born unable to see, you would have a better sense of hearing. If you were born with your eyes in upside down, your entire view of the world would flip on its head. If you lived on a mountainside like a mountain goat, you'd be perfect at balancing and you would never fall. Your brain adapts to its environment and that's what dictates the way you experience the world around you. This is thanks to something called brain plasticity. also called neuroplasticity, describes your brain's ability to change shape depending on your actions, your experiences, your memories, even your thoughts. The very structure of your brain changes shape. If you learn something new, it creates new neural pathways in your brain, and every time you rehearse that thing you've learned, it changes the structure by um, strengthening that connection through myelination and through long-term potentiation. In other words, if you think of your brain like a mind map, Every time you have a new experience, you create a new branch and a new node. And then every time you rehearse that experience, that branch increases in strength and becomes uh, stronger and easier to access in the future. If you do this enough, eventually it become, be can become so inset in your brain that it becomes almost an instinctual association. This is why people who completely lose their memory in accidents can sometimes play the piano perfectly, uh, fluently, even though they haven't played it for years and even though they can't remember their own name sometimes. What fires together, wires together. What does this mean? It means that if two neurons fire at the same time, this creates a slight association. So every time those two neurons fire at exactly the same time, the association strengthens and thereby brain plasticity occurs. Uh, a lot of other things are also involved in this process. BDNF is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, um, and this is a substance produced in the brain that supports the growth of new neurons, new dendrites, axons, and synapses. Uh, you also have nerve growth factor, and this also um, increases the growth of new neural connections and uh, increases the length and the number of your brain cells. Brain cells can be born via a process called neurogenesis. We used to think that after a certain age, you stopped creating new brain cells but this actually turned out to be incorrect. You can create new brain cells at any age. So basically, what you need to know is that brain plasticity occurs through rehearsal. Every time you rehearse something, you cause nuance to fire at the same time. If you focus on it, this increases your awareness of it. This increases your production of dopamine and of norepinephrine, and this makes you, uh, this tells your brain that whatever you're doing is important. As a result, you produce more BDNF, uh, more nerve growth factor, and as a result of that, the, um, the memory becomes solidified or the action becomes solidified, your brain changes shape. As mentioned though, this can be far more profound than just learning a new skill or just uh, uh, picking up a new memory. Your entire structure of your brain can change shape. That's why, as I said, if you're born without sight, um, you can enhance your hearing. If you're um, young enough, you can have a hemispherectomy, which means the entire half of your brain is removed and so plastic is the brain that the other half is able to adapt and change shape and take on all of the roles that the other half was missing and thereby um, you, you're relatively normal despite missing half your brain. So your brain can do incredible things and I think there's incredible potential here for changing our own brains and making ourselves smarter. For instance, it's recently been discovered that synesthesia can be learned. Synesthesia is the ability to um, see colours when you hear sounds or to feel certain ways when you see letters. A lot of people say it's like a secret superpower and helps them with memory. And this can be learned. If you read a book and the letters are um, each written in a different colour consistently as you read the book and if you practice and practice, you can get to the point where you experience colours when you're reading or hearing other texts without the colours. So in other words, your brain can be completely transformed and the potential for this is incredible. You could, uh, that, this is how you would learn ambidexterity. And I think, in general, we're just not very ambitious with the kind of things we're trying to learn. Uh, the extent to which the brain can be changed means we could learn whole new languages that are more efficient than our own language and thus make our thinking faster, you know, maybe more efficient that way. I think what would be interesting would be to take a look at someone who has a particularly remarkable brain and then to try and use brain plasticity to actually make our brains more like that. So let's take Einstein, for example. Einstein 
had a um, thicker corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is the connection between the two halves of the brain. They think that increased his ability to communicate across his entire brain and to connect disparate ideas. So you could increase your own corpus callosum thickness. How? By practicing with ambidexterity, for instance. Ambidextrous people do have thicker corpus callosums, so there you go, you could use brain plasticity to make your brain a little more like Einstein. Einstein also had particularly large inferior parietal lobes, and they were utterly structured, specifically he had a reduced sylvian fissure. What this essentially means is that his uh, non-verbal reasoning, his spatial reasoning, was improved compared with ours. And if you look at the way he describes coming up with some of, idea, uh, some of his ideas, such as um, uh, theory of relativity, special theory of relativity, he actually describes that he, was, uh, he would imagine himself on a beam of light looking back and experiencing what that would look like, or he would describe dropping two things off a roof and experience being one of them falling. So he had a very visual way of thinking, and this is potentially what helped him to uh, come up with his rules of physics, which um, you know, changed the world. So if you could increase your own um, temporal parietal lobe, inferior parietal lobe, then in theory you could gain some of that kind of insight. How would you do that? Maybe through um, games, you know, computer games, they can increase your visual um, thinking, or perhaps maybe through uh, non-verbal reasoning um, exercises. Who knows? But the point is, you could change your brain again, and this could lead to greater insights. It's like an AI that's reprogramming itself to become smarter. We can do that with our own brains. It's actually possible now, using certain nootropics, which I'll come on to, for adults to learn perfect pitch. That's where you hear a note, and you know exactly what note you're hearing. Um, this is something that they thought previously was either something genetic that you're born with, or at least that it couldn't be learned past a certain age. But brain plasticity is such that it can be learned. So this, to me, is the incredible and awesome power of brain plasticity. So now, how do we improve that brain plasticity? What can we do to enhance it? Well, um, a lot of people watching this channel uh, are interested in nootropics, so let's start there. Nootropics are brain-enhancing drugs, for those who haven't watched this channel before. They're smart pills, things that you take that enhance your thinking in one way or another. In theory, anything that would uh, be um, excitatory for your neurons would improve brain plasticity. So, for instance, modafinil or phenylparacetam. Reason being that, uh, as I said, the more focused you are, the more important your brain thinks something is, and the more you produce BDNF, um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Uh, this can be seen in flashbulb memories. For instance, if you think back to where you were when Michael Jackson died, you might remember it because your brain was like, whoa, I'm shocked. I better remember everything around me right now. So if you could focus on things um, and make them seem more important to you, you're more likely to learn them, and you can do that with uh, focus-enhancing nootropics. More specifically, you could do it with nootropics like lion's mane. Lion's mane is a nootropic that is supposed to increase nerve growth factor. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but if you look at the anecdotal evidence and if you look at the studies, it does seem to work. However, I wouldn't say it's a kind of order of magnitude above what you normally would experience. So it's just a, it's a nice little upgrade as an aid, but don't expect it to change your world, as is the case with many nootropics, unfortunately. Um, there's another uh, supplement that I've reviewed on my site called Siltep. This is supposed to in in improve um, long-term potentiation, the ability to strengthen existing connections, um, and also increase your desire to learn, according to some reports. Uh, Siltep, for me, wasn't, uh, again, game-changing. It was all right. I sort of like it. A lot of people described it as a kind of natural alternative to modafinil. I did not find it that way at all, but hey, you know, each to their own. So these kinds of nootropics are ones that affect... Uh, your neurotransmitters I don't think are particularly likely to completely change everything for you, unfortunately. However, something that is very interesting that seems to be able to enhance uh, brain plasticity is valproate. In one study, uh, this is the study where they taught the people to learn perfect pitch using valproate. Um, unfortunately, they've, they've even described it as you know, unlocking the kind of plasticity that we had in childhood. Unfortunately, valproate also has a lot of side effects and it's certainly not recommended that you rush out and buy any. It's just an interesting line of research. And if you head to my website, you can get the study to read there. So, you know, there's potential for that. But at the moment, we're not quite there yet. Perhaps at this stage, a more promising uh, line of inquiry is TDCS. TCDS. Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation. TDCS. This is where you attach um, electrodes to your scalp to electrify your brain, and that might sound like, um, you know, suicide, 
but actually it's not you use very low uh, currents uh, running through that aren't even enough to cause your brain to fire. So you're not stimulating your brain to fire, that's a common misconception. All you're doing is potentiating them, making them slightly more excitable, more light to fire. And this isn't even what increases the, this isn't even what brings about the effects of the brain, uh, of the um, process. Rather, it's that if this process increases BDNF again, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And a lot of people have reported that when they're using um, these uh, transcranial direct current stimulation devices, that they actually experience enhanced learning and other positive desirable effects. What's really interesting about this is that you can also uh, create specific effects by enhancing um, the action of particular brain areas and even by suppressing the action of certain brain areas. So you have an anode, which is the positive, and a cathode, which is the negative. You can suppress brain activity with the cathode and increase activity with the anode. And you put these in certain places on your brain, and this is called your montage. And using this, they've managed to improve specific abilities like the ability to learn uh, motor abilities. So you could increase your brain plasticity whilst performing sports, except you have to wear a stupid headset, um, and thereby potentially learn perfect golf swing much more quickly. You've got other ones which increase your ability to, um, to learn uh, new languages or ones that help you to focus on computer games, for instance. People are actually using these uh, headsets, there's one called Folk.us, people are actually using these headsets in competitive uh, gaming competitions because they can enhance their uh, problem solving and their attention. And the, again, um, I haven't used this one myself, except for once very briefly, and yeah, I can't uh, draw too many conclusions from that. But again, the studies are very promising and the um, anecdotal evidence is great. A lot of people say that it, it has really helped them. They've even increased their score on uh, brain training tests, things like that. Again, I don't think this is an order of magnitude improvement, but it's a small improvement. It's certainly one worth paying attention to. And if you're looking for an interesting, uh, you know, promising field for in increasing brain plasticity or you want to run your own experiments, I would say that's the one to start with. And I'll be performing my own, own experiments. What I can actually wholeheartedly recommend for increasing brain plasticity, though, is just, you know, the boring stuff. So proper nutrition, vitamin B12, omega-3 fatty acid, um, iron, all these things, zinc, magnesium, will improve your brain plasticity. Um, getting proper sleep is one of the best ways. They say that's when a lot of our memories are practiced, rehearsed in the brain, and um, our memories are reinforced, the things we've learned are reinforced. Uh, exercise is fantastic for brain plasticity, and many studies have shown that particularly aerobic exercise can really boost your uh, brain plasticity through a number of different processes. Uh, so, all these lifestyle factors, getting enough of your vital nutrients and sleep and exercise, that's really how you improve your brain plasticity in a safe way. Likewise, I would say <clears throat> getting plenty of... Likewise, just rehearsing, learning, picking up new skills is fantastic for brain plasticity, and that's one of the reasons they think that uh, people who learn a lot and actively seeking out new information experience uh, lesser... Um, decline as they get older, so, you know, learn new languages, try new computer games, they're, they're fun. Every time you learn a new computer game, you're learning new button combinations, new rules, and your brain is rewiring itself. You can feel this if ever you've played a computer game where you have to change the y-axis to go up and down in a plane, for instance. You can actually feel your brain working as you try and, you know, remap what's up and what's down in your head. That's very good for you. Just doing that regularly will increase the BDNF and it will increase your ability to learn new things more. I say learning new languages is fantastic because it's such a, a massive undertaking. Programming languages, all these things, just keep learning, keep reading, and you'll improve your ability to ad adapt and learn new things. I also am a big uh, proponent of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's using your own thoughts uh, to improve your cognition. Normally, CBT is used as a therapeutic tool for treating phobias and things, and it, it means, for instance, telling yourself why you don't need to be afraid of spiders, you know, reminding yourself that your fears aren't really grounded in reality, etc. And rehearsing positive things, testing, etc. CBT can be used to enhance neuroplasticity if you just convince yourself that what you're doing, what you're learning is really important. If you remind yourself why you're doing it, and if you get yourself to the point where you're having an even, you know, a, a slight fight or flight response because you can convince yourself that it's so important. If you do that, then you'll increase the dopamine and you'll increase the norepinephrine and that will increase the BDNF 
and the nerve growth factor. Uh, this is command over your own brain, and meditation can help with that too. So, you know, not very exciting, but some basic stuff like uh, thinking correctly and being healthy will improve your brain plasticity. And the point is as well that I'd like to point out, you don't actually need to increase your brain plasticity all that much. As I said, our brains are already incredibly plastic. We can do all these things like um, learning to balance, like learning echolocation when we lose our eyesight, like um, picking up synesthesia, all these things we can do with no need to change our brains um, through drugs or anything else. Taxi drivers have heavier brains, like I said. Cellists have larger areas in their motor cortex um, corresponding to the tips of their fingers because that's what they use for playing the instrument, of course. So, point being, you don't actually need to change anything. Your brain's plastic enough, and you wouldn't want it to be super plastic either, because if it was, then not only would you be able to learn good things more quickly, you'd be able to pick up bad habits much more quickly. You'd be able to pick up phobias much more quickly. So our brains are the amount of plastic that they are for a reason. You know, we've evolved these brains because these brains turned out to be the best for our survival. And it was true then, and it's pretty much true now. So while you might be interested in using uh, nootropic as a kind of scalpel for occasions when you need to sit down and do some real heavy learning, um, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that that's you know, required, actually your brain is plastic enough for most things, and all you need to do is put in the work and the effort, and it's a lot like bodybuilding, you know, there's no shortcuts. If you want to get the muscle, you need to go to the gym, and if you want to learn new skills, you need to use your brain training, you need to train your brain, you need to practice, you need to learn new things. Um, and I think in the future we'll have better tools for doing this. Um, there's a lot on uh, brain training at the moment, uh, several promising uh, studies being done into how you can use brain training to improve various abilities. Of course, the dual end back training is useful for improving your uh, working memory. Uh, however, I don't think improving your working memory by like one point or, you know, uh, or improving your IQ by one point is really worth all that much effort. If you take one thing away from this video, I want it to be just the potential of your brain to already do incredible things, that you can already learn echolocation without going blind if you're that keen to, that you can already learn ambidexterity, um, that you could change the way you think in order to be more efficient, that you could change your brain to be more like Einstein. I think this is um, where we should be looking. I think there's going to be a lot more attention on that in the future, and I think the ability to reprogram our own minds is possibly, you know, what gives us our most uh, power, our most potency and freedom. Uh, I think in the future as well, we might be using virtual reality tools, because imagine if you could immer immerse yourself in a world that was completely different and practice in it using virtual reality and then take your headset off. Imagine if you could experience a world that was just a couple of frames a second faster than the real world and then take your headset off, would you be able to see the world almost in slow motion? Something worth thinking about. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. Hope you found this video interesting. That's brain plasticity in a nutshell, and that's a few of my ideas on the subject, and that's how you can potentially improve it. So, yes, hope you enjoyed it, like I say, and I'll be uploading more videos on similar topics as well as my usual um, fitness, uh, technology, lifestyle, etc. Uh, if you would like to watch more like that, then please subscribe, like, comment in the comments section, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.